Welcome to our review on series and parallel circuits. Now, this is something that you should have encountered, at least in very basic terms, back in Key Stage 3. So hopefully we remember a few of those key facts that we learned all the way back when we were much younger. If we consider a series circuit first of all, then the first thing we need to remember is that the current is the same everywhere within the circuit. So to measure current, we use a device called an ammeter and then that will give us a reading in amps. Now we can place the ammeter anywhere in series and I've shown that with little red X's, but basically anywhere within that loop, if you put your ammeter, you will get that same reading as anywhere else because our current is the same everywhere within that circuit. If we want to take a measurement of the potential difference across a component, then we need to use a second device called a voltmeter. Now the key difference between ammeters and voltmeters when we're connecting them into a circuit is that the voltmeter has to be connected in parallel to the component, which you can see in the little diagram at the bottom there with the three different voltmeters connected in parallel with the three different components. Now what they actually do is they're measuring the drop in potential across that particular area they're connected. So if we were to actually connect our voltmeter across just a piece of wire, then what we'd actually find is we get a zero reading. And the reason for that is that you get such a tiny drop in potential across a wire that it's not actually registering on the device. One thing we should bear in mind is the difference that we see between our battery or our cell and other components within the circuit. So with our voltmeter, what we're actually going to see is a rise in potential across the battery or the cell, and it will be a drop in potential across a component. So what that actually tells us is that the actual reading that we get on our voltmeter across our cell or our battery is going to be the same as the total of our readings of all the voltmeters across the other components within the circuit. So if we have a look at the diagram at the bottom, we can see that we've got VS, which is our actual voltmeter across our actual power source there. Then we've got V1 and V2, which are across two different resistors. So that if we actually added up our V1 and V2 readings, they would be the same as the VS reading. So the second kind of circuit that we could have are parallel circuits. Now these have a very key difference between the actual series circuit when we look at the readings for current. So in the bottom left, you can see there's a circuit diagram for typical parallel circuit there with two lamps and our battery. And we've got four different places for the ammeter. So A1, A2, A3, and A4. Now, if we actually compare the readings on those, the first thing we'd see is that A1 is the same as A4. Now, what we'd find with A2 and A3 is that if you add those two readings together, then that will be the same as either A1 or A4. Because remember, A1 and A4 are the same. And then if we add up A2 and A3, that will be the same total as either A1 or A4. And the reason for that, if you look at the diagram in the bottom right, is because we're actually talking about two loops, if you like, of a circuit. So where we've got the little box labelled A, then that's our actual ammeter close to our battery. And then you can see we've got B and C, but only one of the loops passes through each of those ammeters. So what we've actually done is we've split the current between the different loops. So if we added B and C together, it would be the same as A. If we look at measuring potential difference in our parallel circuit, then what we actually find is that the potential difference across each of those components is the same as the potential difference across the battery. So one of the assessed practicals that you could be asked about on your physics exam paper is all to do with series and parallel circuits and how they actually work. Now, one of the key things that they could ask you is obviously about some of the problems we can find when setting up these circuits. So one of the key things to consider is the question of what can you actually do if your bulb doesn't light when you're building a circuit. Now, obviously, we're not going to just put down the typical answer of tell the teacher and ask them to fix it for me, because that will get you no marks on the exam. So what you would actually do is work through this logical list to actually work out what the issue is. So the first thing you do is you connect your bulb to the battery and obviously it should light up. If it doesn't, then try another battery. OK, if that one doesn't work, try changing the bulb. 
as soon as you've got the bulb to light up when it's just connected directly to the battery then what you're going to do is check each bulb that you're going to be using so don't just check one thing that's it everything's going to work fine check each and every bulb that you are going to use in your actual setup once you've done that then if you have any issues after that point knowing that all your bulbs work knowing that your battery works then the problem is going to be one of the actual leads so all you're going to do is just replace one lead at a time to check that obviously it's all working when you find one that doesn't light up the actual bulb we know that that's the dodgy lead replace that with a different one and then everything should work absolutely fine the only other thing to consider is that when we're connecting the ammeter you've got to go careful on which way around you connect it into your circuit so you've got to make sure that the ammeter's negative terminal is nearest the negative terminal of the battery if you don't do that then when you look at your actual screen on your ammeter you're going to get a negative reading 